Dr. Fong, this is a game changer in many ways because, again, traditionally, chemotherapy you had to do it. Well, talk to us about this new test. Talk to us about some of the new studies out there. Okay, so yeah, those of us in the breast cancer treatment world have been on the edge of our seats waiting for this data to come out. Last month, New England Journal of Medicine published the results of the MINDAC trial. This looked at 6,693 women with invasive breast cancers, small enough to operate on, around five centimeters or less, three or fewer positive lymph nodes. So Sam totally fits the bill on this one. Then they looked at two different things. One, the main criteria all of us doctors generally use, the age of the patient, the tumor size and grade, how many nodes were positive. And we look at that and say, you know what? Chemo will improve survival, you should do it, or not. So it's a yes or no. Then they did basically a genetic fingerprint of your individual cancer. This is personalized precision medicine. Something we've best. been talking about more and more. Yeah, so mammoprint. It's an assay of 70 different genes. Some are good to have, some are bad to have, and it looks at your makeup of your cancer biology, and it comes back as high risk or low risk, meaning high risk, you should probably do chemo. Low risk, doing chemo will not make a low number lower. Okay, so now you've got two groups. You've got the low, low, you don't need chemo. You've got the high, high, you should do chemo. And then this middle ground of, well, the doctors are saying, based on their best judgment, you should do the chemo. But this genetic test says you don't need it and it won't help. Of those women, there were 1,550 of them. They accrued over five years. They randomly put them into chemo, no chemo, same group. And now we followed them out for five years. And the data proves that there's no statistically significant difference in distant METs, so life-threatening liver, bone, brain METs, five years later, whether you do the chemo or not. So 46,000 women every year with invasive breast cancer who would be told on clinical grounds to do chemo will have a low mammoth print and shouldn't probably do it. This is truly a game changer for people watching. I know it's a bit confusing, but we often talk about we don't always know what to do when we find cancers because some cancers are indolent and they're, they're like you said, they're lazier. And so this one size fits all approach has not worked well. And chemo is a one size fits all, just destroy cells. Just, and it's, it is, it's toxic. It is so difficult for all these women to have been going through this. Obviously we didn't know this till now, but what I wanted to ask you is there's still going to be a lot of fear. They're gonna be skeptics. Sure. Are there still people who would maybe fit into this new category like Sam, based on this new statistical data, who don't benefit from chemo but are still opting for it? Absolutely, it's an individual decision right. in the end and what that number really means to you, offset by the risks of chemo. So yeah, hair grows back, the nausea stops, but there are some long lasting effects. There's cardiac or heart toxicity, Peripheral neuropathy where your fingers and toes and legs can have nerve damage forever. A really bad one is secondary malignancies. Leukemia is a, the most common one, but it's not common. Is it more or less than 1.5%? It hovers around the same. So now you're like, mm, what do I do? My question for you with the mammoprint, is this something that insurance companies are now going to cover given these new results or is this something where women are having to pay out of pocket for it? Both, but the vast majority of cancers where it will impact decision making are covered by insurances. This is truly groundbreaking. Thank you for sharing this with us. And sure. Sam and Tom, thank you for, for sharing your story with us. We certainly wish you all the best moving forward. Thank you. We'll be right back.